about critical control points and operational prerequisite programs. As I was telling you in the previous video, ISO 22000 says that the organization shall categorize the selected identified control measures to be managed as OPIPs or at CCPs. So, we have two concepts here. Let's take a look at the definitions provided by the standard. A critical control point, a CCP, is a step in the process at which control measures are applied to prevent or reduce a significant food safety hazard to an acceptable level and the second part of the definition for the CCP, which is also very important, defined critical limits and measurement enable the application of corrections. The other concept, the OPRP, Operational Prerequisite Program, is by definition a control measure or a combination of control measures applied to prevent or reduce a significant food safety hazard to an acceptable level and where action criterion and measurement or observation enable effective control of the process and or product. If you are not familiar with this standard and with uh, food safety systems according to ISO, you may find it difficult to distinguish clearly between CCPs and OPRPs, but don't worry, you are not alone. Things can be confusing. By the way, OPRPs, Operational Prerequisite Programs, are not to be confused with the uh, uh, PRPs, the prerequisite programs that we discussed earlier. The prerequisite programs are established and implemented prior to the hazard analysis and they are not specific to a hazard that has been identified, while the OPRPs are identified through the hazard analysis and they address hazards assessed by the company and considered significant. The question would be how an organization that implements a food safety management system will decide where it should have a CCP and where the hazards should be controlled with OPRPs. ISO 22000 does not provide details for how to establish a decision process. I think it would have helped if it did. So let's take a look at the definitions. Again, we start with the CCP. It is, as the definition says, a step in the process such as the uh, reception of raw materials or freezing or baking, depending, of course, on the food products in discussion. A step in the process at which control measures are applied to prevent or to reduce a significant food safety hazard to an acceptable level. Also, the CCP should allow uh, to establish critical limits and to measure so that if the control fails, then corrections can be applied. So the characteristics of the CCP are step in the process where controls can be applied, where it is possible to set critical limits to measure and to apply corrections if needed. In a critical control point, it is possible to measure precisely to detect and to correct any failures of the controls in place. Looking back at the example with the pasteurization from the previous video, in that scenario, the pasteurization is a critical control point because it ticks all the boxes. It is a step in the process where controls are applied, where there are critical limits, remember 72 degrees for 15 seconds, and where measurements can be done and corrections can be applied if needed. OPRPs, Operational Prerequisite Programs, are control measures or combinations of control measures applied with the same purpose, of course, to prevent or reduce a significant food safety hazard, but we don't have the critical limit. We have measurement or observation plus action criterion to enable an efficient control of the product or process. In other words, we can understand that OPRPs can be used for situations where it's not so feasible to measure precisely and to detect the failure of a control. Some examples where the control measure is usually identified as an OPIP include visual inspection of a raw material or the manual cleaning of equipment. In such cases, because it's not possible to measure precisely, so to detect and correct failures, the control of the hazard cannot be guaranteed. Notice that for OPRPs, the standard uses the term observation in the definition. Measurement or observation enable the control of the process. In contrast, for CCPs is only measurement. 
observation is considered less precise and so more subjective than measurement. So, to conclude, if the hazard that needs to be controlled has a high probability of occurrence and high severity, and if it is feasible to measure, detect, and correct the failure, here we have a CCP. One more thing I want to say about um, OPRPs, usually they are applied as a combination of control measures, so that the failure of one single control should only have a minor impact on food safety. Now, I would like to introduce you to a tool that is used frequently to decide between a CCP and an OPAP. It is a decision tree. ISO 22000 does not require specifically to use a decision tree, but it asks for a documented decision-making process for the selection and categorization of control measures. So, a decision tree can be a solution. Let's go through the steps. So, step one, the first question, is the hazard significant? Based on the results of the hazard assessment, of course. ISO 22000 requires controls only for those hazards identified as significant. So, if the hazard is not significant, then it means that the PAPs, the prerequisite programs, are sufficient and we don't go further. Step number two, if the hazard is significant, then the next question would be, is there a subsequent step in the process that guarantees the removal of the hazard? If there is uh, such a step, then we have to jump to that uh, step with the analysis. If not, if there is no subsequent control, then the next question is, are there any controls in place at this step to address the hazard? If so, then is it necessary to have critical limits for the control measure. No critical limits means it is not a CCP, it is an OPAP. If there are critical limits, then we have one uh, characteristic of the CCP, but we have to ask another question. Is it necessary to monitor the control measure in such a way that action can be taken immediately in case the control fails? If so, then we have a critical control point. This is the decision tree. I've uploaded this picture as a supplementary resource, but you can find it online quite easily. Any other solution can be used to categorize the control measure as a CCP or OPAP. The decision tree is just one option. Before we move on, I would like to remind you the end objective. Significant food safety hazards shall be addressed with control measures. CCPs or OPAPs, the control measures shall be effective. This is the main idea.